bid on a Dylan Van Bala for Star of 2018. So we have first race uh, is E3 Harold Becker. So here it is on the Boyenberg. So there's a bit of a breakaway with Gilles Bird, Nice and, and some of the other lads. Uh, Van Asbrook there, that's not um, that's not Van Bala. Uh, so I chose Van Bala because he had some solid results in the Spring Classics. He came 4th in Flanders, 8th in Harold Becker and I think it was ninth in Dwarsdorf Flandern. I didn't choose Dwarsdorf Flandern um, just because I don't really like that race very much and I can't really be bored to find the footage. But anyway, he's out at the Boinenberg with the lads. Um, so this is a relatively long climb for Belgium. Uh, so you can see he's coming across now uh, with some of the other lads. Um, so his teammates are sitting on ahead. I think that's Durbridge coming across and when they zoom in, I, th oh, I don't know who that UAE rider is. It might be... Um, um, uh, who could it be? Uh, it will probably be um, what's that bloke's name? The sprinter guy. Uh, can't remember his name. Anyway, they're coming across. There's a quite a big chasing group. It's all strung out. All the lads are trying to get across. So basically, this is the big selecting race. So normally in these earlier spring classics, there's like one climb where all the favourites decide to hit it. So there are pretty much all the favourites: Greg Van Avma, Oli Nason on the front now, Lucas Posselberger. Uh, I'm not sure who the front FDJ is guy, but he looks like he's really struggling on the back. Posselberger does as well, because they're a bit of a class below. Anyway, Van Asbrook sort of dropped back to try and help Val Van Bala across the gap, as he's just doing now. Um, we can see Durbridge is there, and the UAE guy, it could be Ulysse, but I think it's um, their sprinter, and I can't remember his name. He did well in Flan Tour of Flanders, uh, but he was... I think he came across, what was his name, let me find out, I think it's Sasha Modelo, but I'm not 100% sure, um, anyway, he's coming across now, and you can see this, this is pretty much the decisive split, uh, I think there's one more split, which I don't show just because it's, um, it doesn't really affect Van Baal, because he basically couldn't reach it, but, in the end, this is basically the decisive split. You've got the big lads on the front, and anyway, we skip forward to the final case, and up one of the climbs, uh, Gilbert, Van Avma and Oli Nason managed to get away from Van Baal. So Van Baal is in the chasing group. But the reason I think Van Baal will do well next year is because he's starting to get in the top in selecting groups in the final big races. So you can remember Oli Nason last year started doing well, especially the end of season tour of the Euro Metropole, Binch Jimmy Binch, he started to get in the final selecting groups. He also had quite good classics in 2016 as well. And then that really spurred him on. And this year he's gone to the next level, being a, a key player in the, most of the spring classics. Uh, and I think Van Baal can do the same uh, next year for Team Sky. He's got quite a solid team around him. I don't think Luke Rowe will be there. Janny Moscon will be there to help him. Ian Stannard will be there. Kinesse will be there. Dual Dibben. It's a solid thing. Quick Koski could do Flanders as well. Like They do have a really solid team. If they, if they did their best team, Team Sky, they'd have Garrett Thomas as well. Mihal Kwiatkowski, they have a really solid classics team, but I don't think they will be racing. But nonetheless, I think Dylan Van Baal will have a great season for Team Sky next year, just because he will finally have the support, unlike Cannondale. But nevertheless, him and Van Asbrook had a quite a good season last year. So we're coming along. This is They're sort of footsing around, not really doing anything. Everyone doesn't want to take it, take it up, because they basically have a big enough gap from behind. And you can see that, like... These people are definitely a step above Van Baal, but I think Van Baal with some good team sky methods can do it. Nathan was a bit bit worried about get trying to get the results, it went too early and basically let everyone out, poor bloke. But anyway, Greg Van Aver had a solid win. Uh you still can't see it, like it was actually quite a long gap behind. I probably should have put it in to be fair, because it was quite a good attack from those three. But I think he also has a decent sprint to Van Baal. He's not one of those classics riders, like Durbridge, who's a good time trialist, but his sprinting maybe isn't the best. He is more of like a Nason or Van Avma, who can sprint incredibly well. Um, and then he's also a solid climber. Well, he's not a solid climber, but he's good for his weight, that's what I meant. He's, he is, I think, 1 metre, like, 87 and 78 kilos. So he's a big lad, I'm not going to lie, he's a big lad. Um, he's, so this is Posselberger and Durbridge, who managed to hang on a bit longer, and here's basically the peloton with Dylan Van Baal and all the rest of the lads um, who couldn't quite make the split, so here we go to Greg Van Avma, oh yeah, well done, you won, mate. And then, uh, I think that's on the left, is 
Oh, there are so many cannon blokes I don't even know who it was, but I think he was one of was one of those blokes basically who managed to survive uh, until the end. So here we go, Tour of Flanders, 2017. Uh, sorry about that, bit tired. Um, and Gilbert went on the attack up the second time up the Eau de Quermont, and uh, this is the Molenberg, I believe, and it's basically Sagan, uh, Van Baal, Nason, Jasper Steuben. Uh, can I pick anyone else? Like a wanty bloke, I'm not sure who that is. Uh, and they, if you can remember, they basically there was a break up the Capel Moor, um, Bonin's there, sorry. And uh, so, yeah, there was a break up the Moor van Gerardsbergen with Gilbert, Roe, Moscon, uh, and then one of the Cannondale blokes, I think it was Tom Van Asper, took out, um, he took out Luke Rowe. And then Gilbert went on the attack. No one chased him. So Gilbert's on the attack. Sagan, Nason, uh, and all the rest of the lads basically here. I think apart from Van Baal didn't make the break. They just, they they didn't go with the break at all. Uh, Bonin did go with the break actually, definitely. Um, I think that's actually Fabio Fellini, not Stoyven. But they didn't go with the break early on because they decided to save their energy. So when... One quick step and Sky lit it up. So Sky really lit it up there and no one followed. But Van Baal looks pretty comfortable. Look at body position. Sagan's on the front driving. He really wants to bring it back. He's the defending champion. He's got to, he's got to put in most of the work. You can see the riders behind. Most of them are looking relatively comfortable. Not super panicked. Uh, none of them are really... I guess the thing is it's, it's quite a long way to go. And they probably think Gilbert can't hold it. Uh, but Gilbert's an incredibly strong rider. So maybe that wasn't the best... Best plan in retrospect, but anyway, they here they. So Gilbert, we skip ahead to when Gilbert's up the Quermont, last time up the Quermont, followed by the Paderborn, followed by 10k solo. So Gilbert's absolutely smashing up the Quermont. He's gone past the hardest part, the hardest part of the climb. He's gone past the village. He's heading up. Sagan's on the front. Greg ran out second wheel, all struggling. Van out. Um, Oli Nason third. Fabio Fellini is fifth wheel, and our favourite man Van Baal is fourth wheel. Terpstra's already struggling. They've gone past. They've gone past the hardest part, but Terpster is uh, in the saddle, really struggling to hold the wheel. Sagan's on the front, and oh my god, crash! Sagan, Sagan crashed into the barrier. Ollie, Ollie Nason went down as well. Someone's coat like hid into it. Absolute chaos. I think Sagan's sunglasses got run over or something. Anyway, we'll watch more highlights in a bit. Gilbert's still on the attack, smashing it forward, as you can see here. And as we keep going, I think the video cuts out a bit here, sorry about that. But Van Baal managed to, was the luckiest bloke of the day and managed to avoid all of this problem. And he, he managed to basically, uh, we'll skip ahead of the video. So as you can see here, there's sort of the aftermath, the crash. Sagan is just looking like what the hell happened. And then here we go, Van Baal managed to basically avoid the crash because he was riding on the other side of the road. And then they all went crashing down because he basically got dropped, and he just rides straight past them. He's like, "Unlucky lads, mate! I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get the top top five at Flanders, and you've all fallen." Because look, Sagan's so so close, smashed it into it. I think Ollie Nathan hit a coat by, but that wasn't the reason he crashed. So again, bars hit the barrier, and that was the problem. And anyway, Van Baal managed to avoid the bead on and the glasses, but I think touch it runs over Sagan's glasses later. So here we, so you can see Sagan's waiting, like, "What the hell's going on?" All the the people who run the race, the Flanders Classics, are like, what the hell happened to me? What's going on? The people in Bora Hans grew a car are like, no, that's the monument gone. Sagan's on the floor. What the hell is happening? <laughs> this is absolutely disastrous for the whole team. Uh, and <laughs> it was absolutely chaos. I remember watching it being like, this is absolutely nuts race. Gilbert on the attack. Then Sagan and all the favourites basically crash. And anyway... So Sen Sagan keeps going up the climb with his teammate. We skip ahead to the Paderberg. So last time Sagan was dropping people up the Paderberg, but this time it's Gilbert on the attack. Up the Paderberg, still still going solo. And you can see these are the remnants of everyone else who's trying to keep up with Sagan. But Dylan Van Baal, on his own, is going up the Paderberg very strongly indeed, actually. He's the group two, this the chaser. And you can see behind that you've got Greg Van Avbat and Nicky Terpstra behind, chasing hard, trying to get him back. Uh, it just doesn't look that steep, the Paderberg on this, but it is. it really ramps up. Actually, this bit's not too bad, but 
you'll see here that gets really, really hard. But they're all struggling. Trentin's getting dropped, I believe. And Van Avmaat's absolutely destroying up the Paderberg. They're going so fast. You can't really tell, but, like, this is a wall. I was going to 8K an hour uphill, 5K an hour uphill. Like, it's, uh, it's a wall. Um, and Van Baal, I think he knows he's going to get caught, so he's not wasting too much energy. But clever play from him. But he's still, you know, giving it enough because they could just mess around. They could never really close the gap and then he could solo off to a second place, which would be quite solid for him. And I guess, I don't know, He probably if he waited, he probably could have out-sprinted Terpstra maybe. But anyway, we now go ahead to when he's just doing some chasing on his own. So he's basically trying to get Gilbert back, but he sort of knows it's not going to happen because Gilbert is just way too far up the road. Uh, but Terpstra and Greg Van Avermaet are now chasing Van Baal. They're sort of messing around because they don't really want to chase him. But then I think Van Avermaet's the one who's really like, yeah, I want to I want to try and get Gilbert back. While Terpstra will just be sitting on because he doesn't want to catch Gilbert because it's his teammate. So we can now see Sagan's going up the uh, Paderberg quite a long time back. Quite a long way behind. He knows he hasn't won. He just can't really be bothered to race. I mean, he wants to finish the race because he's defending champion, but he doesn't really. He has no intentions of winning the race, and he knows he can't. Terpstra is. I don't know. He seems to be doing turns, but I guess maybe it's because he wants to. It's so far away. They're not going to get 53 seconds back in it. In 10k, I mean, you could barely do that if you're a full peloton against a breakaway, let alone three riders against Gilbert, and they're all pretty weary, so. It's very unlikely unless Gilbert bonked or had a cramp or something. But anyway, we skip ahead. Final 1k. Gilbert on the front, definitely going to win. Greg Van Avermaet driving as hard as he can. You can see he's really rocking and rolling because he's just putting everything he's got into into it. Terps just looking a bit a bit bad. Van Baal looks not too, not too uncomfortable. He's got a good high cadence. They're all pretty high cadence, to be fair. They're all looking like they've... Going hard, but not absolutely destroying themselves, because I think they know they're not going to win, so they're trying to save a little bit for the sprint. So Gilbert is still going pretty hard. Like, from here, it looks like they're quite close, but in reality, they're maybe four, or 500 metres behind him. Like, from now on, yeah, as Gilbert looks back, he knows he's won. And what a legend he is. <laughs> Big Philly, massive, massive solo attack, 60k out, incredible scenes. But Van Baal had a, a great race, in my opinion. He... Yeah, luckily managed to miss that crash. That would have helped. But he was in the final selection. I like... He was there with the big lads. Okay, maybe he would have got dropped on the Paterberg if he had managed to hold on the Quermont, or he would have got dropped de definitively on the Quermont and would have never got back on. But I still think even without the crash, he would have got a top 10. But with the crash, you can see now, there's, here's the sprint. And, uh, yeah, Van Baal managed to get... Basically didn't do anything in the sprint. And here comes the remnants of the peloton... So thanks for watching. Hope Van Baal does well on the Spring Classics next year. See ya.